Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net, building on the previous lesson's discussion about how the Layout Aware page tells the View State Manager which View State storyboard to execute. In this lesson, we're going to make sure our Contoso Cookbook app looks good in either snapped or filled mode on each page. So just to be clear, we're in lab number two and we're going to be working in exercise number two, snapping, and we'll perform all four tasks in this video. And so as the uh, kind of the explanatory text talks about, first of all, some work has already been done to the grid app template to make it look good in snap state, but we're going to need to make some tweaks and changes because it doesn't look perfect. And secondly, it talks about the minimum uh, screen resolution in order to get snapping to work. So make sure you're on a device that it's at least uh, or development machine that's at least 1366 by 768. Otherwise, it just won't work. <laughs> and you'll be trying to use the snapping maneuver by hovering your mouse cursor over and pulling it and it'll just ignore it. And it's, trust me, I I spent a half hour trying to figure that out on my own one time. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what the app looks like right now. I'm gonna go ahead and run the app in the simulator without making any changes to it. And it's where we left off from. So let me rotate back here. Okay, and then what I wanna do it's going to hit the Windows button and I'm going to open up. Oh, let's open up the Finance app. And then I'm going to hover in the upper left hand corner. And until I see the Contoso cookbook icon, I'm going to drag it now until it makes a space for it there in the uh, on the left hand side in the snapped area. So as you can see, the grouped items page looks looks pretty good. There are some tweaks that we can make to it, but overall looks decent. What if we were to go into the into the group detail? That too looks decent. There might be a few small changes we can make to it. And then if we were to go into the item detail, uh, boy, that doesn't look good at all. So we got a lot of work to do there. Let's make it into filled by just dragging the the bar over to the right hand side and still it doesn't look great we can barely see the directions but that's all we can see the group detail page looks decent it could be cleaned up a little bit here and there a little bit too much spacing for this view and so forth uh, but you know as we would expect that um, grouped items page looks looks really good so we have some work to do uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just Go back to the start page here and then switch over to Visual Studio. Okay, so let's take a look at the instructions here. Uh, we've already performed task number one to run it in snap mode and, and make sure we understand what works and what's not quite working. Next, we're going to modify the snapped version of the grouped items page. So that is grouped items page.xaml. And what it wants us to do is to uh, modify the list view, not what we've been working in, the grid view, but the list view. We want to change its item template, the standard 80 item template. And so I'm selecting it and then I'm going down to miscellaneous and I'm going to find the item template and then go to source. All right, so here's our standard. 80 item template. Now let's see what it wants us to do. Ah, I see. It's going to have us add the prep time, which will be good. And I think change from title to short title, which should make it fit in that smaller space a little bit. Uh, more appropriately because right now it's just bound to title and then there is no subtitle. So that's the major change it looks like that we're making here. So let's go over uh, to the uh, right hand side here and copy the code. And so we'll just replace this entire data template. Let's see. Yeah, the whole data template will just be changed out. And so there we go. We've made the change. Let's see what else we're supposed to do now and just test it. All 
All right, so let's pull up our finance app into the large area here. And now you can see that our grouped items page, the title is short and we get the prep time added. So that's a that's a nice improvement. It's small, but it's a it's a great use of the space. Great. So that's step number two. Now let's move on to step number three. Modify the snapped group detail page. And so here we want to find the list view that's named item list view. So let's start there. Group detail page. Here we go. Whoops, group detail page. There we go. And we're looking for that. Let's roll up the grid view here. The list view that's called item list view. All right, found it. And now we want to remove the first text block element from the controls list view header and change the left margin from 20 to 10. All right, so we're looking at remove the first text block and we're modifying the images. And the text blocks margin. Okay, so here we go. Getting rid of subtitle. And then we're going to change from 10 to 20 on the margins. Or was it from 20 to 10? From 20 to 10, the left margin. All right, there we go. All right, and then next, what it wants us to do is go ahead and run that. So we're in the group detail. All right, let's go ahead and switch over. And we want to go to the group. All right. And so it looks great. There's less room over here on the left-hand side, which is awesome. Less room between the text blocks and the image. That's great. And so it looks nice. Okay, very good. And so you can see we're just making small changes here. We're not, we're not changing the world. And you can do this too and be tweaking your app, but it takes a lot of little, make a little change, Go back and say, what's not working about this? And just stare at it for a little while. I think it should have less space. I think the font should be smaller. I think there should be more room between the between those two lines. I think the image is all wrong. We need maybe smaller versions of the image that just pinpoint something. And so think like a designer in that regard. All right, so next up, we're supposed to add a new flip view to those that are already there in the item detail page. So let's go ahead and copy this and open up our item detail page and let's go ahead and let's roll up the flip views that are already there and paste in this new one and then it wants us to um, find the visual state element name snapped near the bottom of the item detail page and then add the following elements that are already pres present in the visual state uh, for snapped. All right. So we're looking for the snapped visual state. Here we are. And we're supposed to merely add these new object animation using keyframe objects. All right. So it looks like what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that the other flip views are, or the other flip view is set to collapsed and the snap flip view visibility will be set to visible. Make sense? And I think that's it. We'll go ahead and run it. All right, so here again, we need to get into snapped view. I'll go ahead and move that over. All right, and let's click an individual recipe. All right, 
and now it looks good. Now there are no instructions, but we do get the ingredients, and that makes sense because we don't want to be scrolling through this. If we want the full page experience, we can do something a little bit more like this, right? All right, so in this lesson, we've definitely turned a corner. Our app is looking good, it's performing well. From this point on, we're merely gonna be enhancing the app's features by hooking into the Windows Runtime API to improve our user's experience. In the next lesson, we'll allow our users to zoom in and out of the main page to present them with a low level and then a high level representation of the information on that page, a feature that's called Semantic Zoom. So we'll see you there, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.